This is delicious. You don't, you want to try this? See, I'm not a whiskey drinker. And that is yummy. It's five o'clock. Somewhere. Somewhere. We are the Armed Attorneys. Today, we're here very casually discussing with you um, the stupidest things our clients have ever done. You asked, we listened, and um, our clients often make us want to drink. So cheers to you. Cheers to the people that we've kept out of prison against their best instincts. And here we go. Before we get started, show your support for the Second Amendment by hitting the like button. Today's episode is brought to you by Sonoran Desert Institute. They support our channel. If you are interested in taking your hobby to the next level with armor courses, gunsmithing, and so much more, visit www.sdi.edu slash armed hyphen attorneys. Don't drink and gunsmith. And let's hope that the lovely hope folks cool at- with this. SDI are all right with alcohol. All right. So this is, we're calling this the sidebar. Yes. Sidebar. Yeah. Sidebar is, um, w- what's the best way to describe a sidebar for, for the uninitiated? That's, that's yeah. all the uh, Outs- statements that shouldn't be made in court. Right. Well, like outside, that are made in court. Right. Well, and like, yes, things that are outside the presence of the jury, off the record. Yeah. It's usually when the judge turns to the side and chastises the lawyers out of yeah. view of their clients. So God, that they... why do I get yelled at by judges so often? I don't know. I... Is it me or is it them? Is it me? Hi, no. I'm the problem. It's me. Mm. That's Taylor Swift. You look like a. You look like you have no idea what I'm doing right now. I don't know what a Taylor Swift. I'm is. I'm the problem. It's me. Okay. Any rate, so we have had, uh, I, and I think what started this by popular demand. In fact, I was manning the live chat. Uh, this week, yeah. and we were talking about burying a gun, and someone said, "I want to hear the stupid things your client has done." And initially, I was like, "Oh my god, I can't do that because they'll know and they'll get mad at me." And then I had a little bit to drink, and I said, "I don't care. Let's <laughs> talk about it." Well, and we're not going to be disclosing any. Nobody's going to no. be tracing no, anybody. No, no. It would, it's is. only personal humiliation if anyone here recognizes themselves in this story, and yeah. hopefully. Those people don't watch us. Yeah, it's like, and also it's like, um, you know, any of those shows like SVU, where it's like you totally know what case they're talking about. Mm-hmm, yeah, mm-hmm, we're not doing that. No, no, no. This is all definitely confidential, in, unless you happen to be the perpetrator, in which case, like, <sighs> saw we. Here we go. Um, <laughs> where should we that... begin? Why don't you talk about? So we talked about burying the gun after a perfectly good self-defense incident last yeah. week. So, so catch people up. We had a yeah. guy, self-defense incident, perfectly justified, right? Yeah. Good Except, good shoot. Did a weird thing, though. Went into his backyard, dug a hole, placed the gun in the hole, and then covered it up. Yes. But then also told the police that he didn't he disclose to the police that he buried it. Yeah. So it's like he ratted himself out, too, which was stupid. So, I mean, that's kind of what I think started all of this. Yes. But. Crazy enough, that's not my first buried a gun story. No, Richard is actually specializes in the burying of evidence. So. Gun burial law. Yeah. So, <laughs> but no, I, you know, so it made me think of another case where a guy was going to go see a concert out of town. Um, so, you know, what do you do? You carry. But you don't, though. I mean, first of all, I'll right, say, like, don't. if you're going to a big event, like a sporting event or a concert or... They're going like, to have metal detectors. They're going to have security. They search your bags. Minute Maid Park is not going to let me in with my gun. No. I know that. So anyway, so yes. Yeah, so as one does, though. Yeah. Out of town, took an Uber to the venue, bewildered to find out that there are metal detectors at the entrance. So he did what any rational person would do. He found a nearby potted plant, dug a hole in it, and buried his gun. Yeah. That, I mean. Didn't miss the concert. No. No. Nope. You know what? Objective achieved and you'll all be pleased to hear that when he finished the concert he went back out at the pana plan he dug the the dirt up and the gun was not there <laughs> <laughs> sorry I what do you do i gotta call the police and report that didn't but that's what he called you for right he was like i gotta call the police to report my missing gun right i think i advised him not to call the police. no yeah don't call the police you can call the police well because i mean i mean what if a child gained access to you know all these things um I mean, no. I, yes, I, I told them not to report no, to the police. You I mean, I not report that. And I'm sure there's some people going to be like, you should always report a lost or stolen gun um, in the comment yeah. section, but this was not and the th- time. And that is great moral advice. 
Yeah, you're talking and, to, talking to the wrong people for that. Yeah, if you're looking for if you're looking for like the right moral decision, there are lots of people who specialize in that. Contact your local priest, preacher, rabbi. rabbi yeah. Um, not your lawyer. So your lawyer is going to tell you whatever's going to keep you out of trouble. Yeah. That's a job. That's that's literally what you pay us for. I can't tell you the number of people I've had who just have possession of guns that they're not supposed to, and they want to call that in. Like I had a guy who got in a fist fight with someone, fist fight being perfectly rational and reasonable, right? Because he was, I think he truly was defending himself. They were at a bar and then they get in this fist fight and the guy who he's fighting, his gun falls out onto the floor of the bar Mm. and everyone's like, holy shit, there's a gun in the bar, right? So the guy who I think, again, rightly defending himself in this bar fight, looks at that gun and goes, finders keepers, and he picks it up and he flees, flees. Wow. And so he flees with this other guy's gun. And he was like, well, I was just trying to get it away from him. And I left. And now I don't know what to do because I have this gun (laughs) that's definitely reported stolen. And like he thought that probably people had taken pictures and videos of what had happened too. And he was like, well, what do I do with this gun? And I was like, do you have a lake? I mean, I like, what do you want me to tell you? Like, first of all, you took possession of a gun in a 51% establishment, which is a crime. Um, second of all, you committed theft of a firearm, which is a crime. Yeah, Third of all, like now, like, what are you going to do? You you were doing the right thing. You did the right thing up until the time that you stole someone else's gun. <laughs> and he's like, no, I just didn't want him to be dangerous with it because he was all drunk and stuff. And it's like, were you not, sir? Yeah. Were you I'm, not? That reminds me, there was a high profile case about that FBI agent who's doing like handstand yes, dancing and his the dancing fell. guy. Yeah. yeah. A wedding. Um, yeah. But Oof. I think the, the moral of the story kind of to both of those is. You need to have a plan wherever you're going. Right. Don't take the guns where you're not supposed to take the guns. Or if you do, you don't get drunk. Right. Number one. Number two, don't get in a fight. Yeah, we had that law proposed in Texas, designated defender law. Like you could carry into a bar if you Oh, did. yeah. Yeah, did ha- didn't place. make progress. Didn't. But but yeah, for, the, good, though. for these big events, especially private property, these folks, I mean, they want to exclude firearms. They don't want you to bring your gun there. Mm-hmm. You know, the answer is I'm not going to go into a gun-free zone. I'm not going to give them my business or have a plan ahead of time. Yeah. Also, don't do stupid things. Like, there's yeah. like, there's a difference between like, okay, I'm going to the movies with my kids, yeah. and I know that the movie theater says no guns, right? And I know that I'm gonna lose standard ground and possibly some other legal presumptions if I have to defend us in the movie theater, but I'm taking the chance. Right. That is different than like, I'm gonna get lit up in the bar with my gun on me. Also, like, I am not gonna de-escalate a situation. You come at me, I'm gonna definitely, you know, engage yeah. in the fight. I mean, just just be smart. I mean, I guess we're not talking about smart client decisions in this episode. No, so. no, 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 we're All not. Right. But there's still lessons to be learned here. That there are. Can I talk about the 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 murder guy who's on my mind though? You got a murder on your mind? I got a murder on my mind. I'm a murder, I'm a murder on my mind. Oh no. So Yes, because you know about this guy. And I will say, like, of the break to the camera, if we're talking about really stupid things that people have done, it's this. So he decided he was going to – and luckily, I didn't actually have to defend this guy. He was a potential client. um, So he decided, I think, just planned in his head that he was going to shoot his ex-wife's new boyfriend. Hmm. You know, again, I would I would encourage you not to do that, but understandable, I suppose. And so he's like, but here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to frame the guy and I'm going to make it look like self-defense. He doesn't tell me this, but of course it becomes very clear as I'm looking at things. So the police actually find the gentleman with the gunshot wound dead and they find that he is clutching his car keys in his hand because he's just trying to get into his car because he has no idea this murder is coming. And then they find that the self-defender has taken a kitchen knife and has placed it on top of the clutched car keys in hand hand. Oh, that was his drop knife. It was his throwdown knife. I'm not saying don't have a throwdown knife, don't have a throwdown gun. Why not? Maybe can't hurt you, but if you're going to plant- Don't tamper with evidence. Don't tamper with evidence. This is facetious. If you're going to plant a weapon on someone, don't do it when it's obviously not feasible. Like, if I'm already clutching a wine glass in my hand dead, like I hope to go out one day, if you put a gun on top of my wine glass hand, it is very clear that I wasn't using the gun. Right. Right. 
Yeah, I'm trying to think of a, a more absurd example. Like, if you there's didn't not have... one. That's like the most absurd. <laughs> like, guy without arms throwing down some brass knuckles or something. <laughs> <laughs> That's like, the only way it gets worse. No, like, yes. Uh, Producer Jen laughing in background. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but no, the oh god, that so don't plant evidence. No, don't disturb don't this. Do that. Don't do that. That's really stupid. we still we still have to give give some lessons here. Yeah. Uh, the lesson do is. We... This is our se- full disclosure, people. This is our second take, and so the booze is really starting to take effect here. So, do we have to give lessons? I'm gonna try to insert them if I can. <sighs> All right, whatever. Don't plan evidence. Do you? Okay. Yeah. There we go. Moving on. Don't plan murders, too. Number one, I guess. <laughs> don't plan murders. Number two, don't plan evidence. Okay. Real story. This just happened. Uh, client shows up. This happened just a day ago. All right. Well, this is this goes into court decorum mistakes. Yes. Client shows up. There is no less than 30 signs outside the court saying no shorts. Mm-hmm. And there's yep. a bailiff looking at people as they walk in and turning people away who are dressed inappropriately for court. And so I happened to catch a glance at my client and the security. You know, we spoke right before at the entrance. He had to go through security. I went upstairs yeah. and he was wearing shorts. And so I texted him. I said, hey, if you've got pants in your car, you need to go put your pants on. Put your pants on. There's a Miss Rachel song about that. Tell me you have a toddler without telling me you have a toddler. <laughs> but then he then proceeded to tell me, um, it says no shorts, not no dress shorts. And he was wearing dress shorts. And so dress that, shorts. Yeah. So, but Here's I Here's the s- lesson. Dress shorts are not a thing. <laughs> That's not a real item. No, no, no. But when you go to court, you got to, can't bring your dog, can't bring, bring your emotional your support hillbilly. Don't bring your hillbilly. W- wear. Where, yeah, you dress like you're going to church. Yeah, dress like you're going to church. There's the, le- look, we inserted a lesson. Lessons. Do we just sound like a bunch of <laughs> no? Probably. That's all right. Here we are, world. Here we are. Uh, but I will say, I'm very proud of myself. I did some, I mean, we concealed his shorts for the entire court setting. I, when we walked up, I walked in front of him. When we crossed the bailiff, I stood next to him and held my folder next to him. I mean. That's lawyering, man. That's, if that's not your lawyer advocating for you, I don't know what is. That's, you know what? Yeah, do we do one of these? The... Thanks. Um, all, all right. right. <laughs> so we have clients who, on the on the thread of fabricating or tampering with the scene, um, you have a pretty extreme example of this with a dog, don't you? I do. Yes. So I think I'll I'll throw out Let the me lesson preface, here. Preface with poor puppy. Poor puppies. We don't advocate puppy shooting. I'll throw out the lesson here. It's. If you are going to hide what you did, just hide it. Don't don't fess up later. So because it looks so much worse. So yes, I had a guy who shot his neighbor's dog, said the neighbor's dog was very aggressive. I suspect in my own mind that he just shot the neighbor's dog because he didn't like it. But, you know, I wasn't there. No one was there. Very well could have been a defensive incident. He he justified it as such. Okay. And so I said, that's super. Have you talked to the police? What's going on? Where are we? No, because he called me a day later after he had already burned the dog carcass. And granted, he's got a lot of land. I mean, poor if, puppy. Poor puppy. But if you shoot a dog on 10 acres and nobody's going to hear it, like, just bury the dog, man. Like, don't yeah. get police involved. Like, just it, anyway. So um, he had burned the dog carcass, but not before in serial killer esque fashion, preserving the collar and the tags like a trophy. Like Dexter? Yes. Oh, God, I love serial killers who kill other serial killers. So, yes, like a trophy, preserved the dog collar and tags. So at that point, I mean, he's calling me like, what do I do? And I'm like, nothing, man. You did it. You done did it. But definitely don't report it now. And sure enough, police come, knock, knock, knock. Hey, your neighbor's dog is missing. They have a theory that it was you because you hate the dog. And apparently you've gotten in a lot of confrontations with them about it. So what's going on? And sure enough, if he did not let them into the property and show them to the burned carcass and disclose all of the evidence and that he still had the collar and yes, this was in fact his neighbor's dog, it was like, you know what doesn't look like good defense? Right. Is when you've burned the body afterwards. Yeah. So it's like you either burn the body and you just move on with your life and when the police come knocking, you're like, yeah. I don't know. Yeah, mistake or mistake one, talk to my lawyer when they knock on the door. All right. right. You do talk to the you do talk to the police. You don't say, "Here's the burned dog carcass, poor puppy." Yeah. Also, I did it in self defense before I destroyed the evidence of it. Like, sure. No. Also, yes, poor puppies. 
But don't do that. That's a lesson. <laughs> that, that's the lesson. <laughs> yeah. Don't engage in that behavior. Uh, well, if we're going to go with tampering and talking to the police when you shouldn't, I think I maybe mentioned this one before. Negligent discharge inside of the house. Mm -hmm. yeah. All right. So client negligent, dis negligent discharge. Guess what? That happens a lot. Negligent discharge. Oh, come on. <laughs> <laughs> was it that? No, we haven't had was that it much to drink. Joe Biden, true anana to shop out of pressure. Did I just do that? No, we haven't. I met given bad, you hard time. bad of bath care. I'm sorry. It's giving you a hard time. Mad of bath care. Didn't he say bad of bath care? <laughs> Probably. I don't listen to him. You it's un it's unlistenable. So we got a negligent discharge. Nobody plans for negligent discharge. No. It happens a lot. It happens. Um, a lot. There's lesson there take steps to not have negligent discharge. <sighs> don't play with your guns just in the middle of your house. No, have like a that. designated area. Yes. Keep the ammunition away from it. All right, moving on. So he shot through his window. Nobody hurt, as far as we could tell. Um, didn't advise him. You know, we're in a state where you don't have to report a negligent discharge. So nobody hurt. No issue there. Don't tattle on yourself. Didn't call 911. So there's no evidence that an investigation was proceeding in or in progress. So what does that mean, Texas? You can patch Fix up the window. window. Yeah, pat, pat, patch up the window. So we, uh, I said, go ahead and replace your window pane. He did. Uh, about a week later, his neighbor noticed some damage on the exterior's house, called the police. Uh, it doesn't take a rocket scientist to draw a straight line sure. from that wall to neighbor's window. And this is where, back to that mistake, same mistake you had, don't talk to the cops don't. or have an attorney talk to the cops for you. Yep. He consented to a search of his house. Police come in. Everything looks all squared away. No problems. Until they pull the curtain back and he had a bullet hole in his curtain. You know, because it went through the curtain, went through the window, struck the house, and then they ended up charging him. Yeah. But yeah. if they, if this is just one of those examples where if you don't talk to the cops, they would have never yes. figured the this out. The stupidity there was letting them inside because right. the hole in the curtain is like one of those things that's like, God, was curtains are expensive. What are the odds? I will say, just in the nature of, um, just be careful with your gun. Yeah. Um, stupid. Just this is just a not a stupid client mistake, you know. But just like a, I guess, just humans should think to do better than this. Sure. Um, because this guy didn't get charged with anything because he didn't do anything wrong. But it was New Year's Eve one year, and you know we have a for for those of you who know that there is a you know, legal services company that we do work with in association. Um, I was manning said hotline for said company, and I get a call from someone who is, in fact, not a member, um, but he, his friend is a member, and it's New Year's Eve, and I hear this screaming on the other end, and I'm like, emergency hotline, what's your emergency? And he's like, uh, my friend, <clears throat> my friend said to call you, and I'm like, oh, dear God, what's happening? He's like, we're at <clears throat> New Year's Eve, we're at dinner. He doesn't Is keep he his holding gun. back vomit. Yep. Okay. He doesn't keep All his right. gun holstered. He doesn't. He doesn't. And he stood up and he touched. He touched the trigger well and he shot him himself. Right. And you gotta stop. He shot himself <laughs> right in the where you would imagine he shot himself. Um, and apparently there was just so much blood um, that it was. It was. Are you saying he blew his off? Yes. I didn't want to say it. Oh, okay. Well, I said. But it. Yes, he shot himself right in the. And, um, you know, he did not, in fact, commit a criminal offense. However, um, I would say... It's not say, a crime to shoot your own off. It is not a crime to is shoot Is that your what own. you're telling everyone? It is not a, not legally. Um, Linda. Linda. <laughs> <laughs> but I will say, um, just don't carry without a holster. Don't. Can we just use that as like a, a yeah, lesson? A, there, look. Yeah. Here, you inserted a lesson. Insert. Against, Insert against lesson your, here. Against, against, against your my will. better judgment. Yeah. Just if you're going to appendix carry, use a holster. Yeah, be careful. I still have like a thousand more stories, but do we save it for the next time we get a little tipsy and yeah, film let's a video? save it for another uh, weekend filming. Yeah, you know, ain't ain't got nothing yeah. to do. This is definitely not a weekday morning. No. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not gonna be able to. Hold on, I, I gotta <laughs> regain my. But well, no, we're Jen. We're not cutting any of this. This is all yeah. gold. So just so you know. Oh God. Do you want to try to close it out? No, but I think. I still do think. I mean, there is value in talking about these because there. I mean, first of all, 
it's fun. It and is I fun. Think, this is a lot of fun to talk I about. I think y'all don't get to see us as humans that often because we sit here and we talk to the camera and we're like, this is 18 USC, blah, 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 blah. When realistically, this is kind of what, you know, this is this is the reality of Emily and Richard. Yeah. For the most, for yeah, the most part. I'd say more, more frequently than the former. Yeah. It's a lot of things that we probably should cannot and should not ever say on camera no but this but, is I, I will say this since this is a new format yes i do would greatly appreciate feedback if you like this thumbs up if you do not like it i actually am going to solicit a thumbs down yes let um, us know yeah let us know and if you want us to do more of this in the future you know talk to us in the comment section we i mean we've been active in the comment section lately yes and I we've got a lot and we've got a lot of um a i lot mean of not requests. the auto hit comments just so you know YouTube auto hides the worst things that you say. I do not check them because I do not need to know. I check them because they're hilarious. I don't like, and Richard sends them to me sometimes, and I don't, I don't like it. But, um, but otherwise, we do look. Just not the auto hides. Be responsible out there. Hopefully, you got some value out of this. Hopefully, you had a good time. But we hope you enjoyed this discussion. If you did, consider subscribing and that like button and help us fight the anti 2A algorithm by sharing this video. And do question and comment. Let us know if you want us to do something like this again. It's a little different. Until next time. Links <laughs> for the arm journeys. <laughs>